gentlemen, this week the name on the marquee <clears throat> has got to be Johnny Bones Jones, the man himself, who this past weekend in front of 19,000 plus at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada, became himself a double champ in the UFC, claiming the UFC heavyweight title by finishing Cyril Gaon at 2 minutes and 4 seconds of the very first round with a guillotine choke. Mark, let me toss it over to you first this time. Johnny Bones, already considered by many to be the MMA GOAT, claims now not just the light, the light heavyweight, but now the heavyweight title. Uh, and he made it look very easy against a very high-level uh, kickboxer in Cyril Gaon. What was your reaction? Uh, he sure did. I mean, what can you say? What can you say about this, man? This, this is not normal. Like, I know we all thought he'd win. I know Omar even thought he would do it quick. But for him to go in there and do it like that, a career light heavyweight, I know it's John Jones, but a career light heavyweight taking his first fight at heavyweight and not even getting touched a single time in route to victory, other than a nut shot, I guess. That is some shit. I mean, it it was perfect. It was literally, it was perfect. The timing from John to yeah. duck under that left straight and immediately take the back was so clean. And then the control, the way he leveraged his weight and, and circled from Gon's back to get the takedown. And then, of course, the, the choke that was in so suddenly, people didn't even realize it was in. The commentary didn't realize it was in. I wasn't sure it was in. And next thing you know, he's tapping, and, and we're out of there. I mean, it. it was a big big buildup, one of these fights that just kind of ends, and you're like, oh, fuck, that, that was it. That's all we're getting here. But that's what happens when you're, uh, when you're John Jones sometimes. I mean, that was light work for the GOAT, and he is now a two-way champion. He will have a chance now against Stipe Miocic to – close the argument of the, of who is the goat with a hundred percent certainty yeah. for anyone who doesn't already think the argument is closed and uh yeah it was three years we had to wait a long time but you can't you can't come back and stake your claim much more clearly than john bones jones just did omar let me get you in here what was your reaction to john jones winning in the way that he did i wasn't surprised um I mean, like I said last week, man, this is, stylistically, this was a terrible matchup, like, for, for Cyril Gunn. We saw him get manhandled by somebody who learned how to wrestle yesterday. And John <laughs> Bones Jones has been manhandling legends since he was a child at this point. There was nothing for me to believe that Cyril Gunn was going to win that fight. Nothing. And so... I guess where I was surprised was how quick he found the choke, if nothing else. But I knew eventually he was going to take him to the ground, and Sorogon was going to have no answer. No answer whatsoever once it actually came to fruition. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, the choke was... The first choke he put in didn't really look like he had it. Then he made some kind of adjustment, some small adjustment, and he had his whole body... I think on him on top of just the choke itself and it just yep made it worse it was wild i will say i left there with more questions than i went in there with in the first place did you a little bit in what right? regard because yeah well in in the regard that we we, ha we still haven't seen him in real danger in a real scrap at heavyweight right oh okay like, yeah nothing sure. like i'm not gonna give him shit for it he did it, it was a oh. masterful performance right he what he was supposed but, to do but it does still leave some of those questions open, and it kind of makes you wonder, which is why the Stipe Miocic fight is very interesting, because we expect Stipe to put up more of a fight than, than Cyril Gaon. Um, we expect yep. the wrestling defense and the wrestling credentials of Stipe to play to some positive aspect in, in, in the game that he's going to try to employ on John Jones. Oh, yeah. Um, but, man, like... <clears throat> I, I'm not really sure what the cardio is going to look like from John Jones, right? Like, we do go into five rounds. We didn't really get that question answered. Just a lot of little things that after such a dominant performance, we still don't know. And I was also thinking to myself, does this kind of prove or, or, or at least give a stronger inclination that he was just bored at light heavyweight? 
Because this, this was a performance where his legacy was really on the line, right? Like, he's fighting for a heavyweight title. Everybody's watching him. He's back. He's the top of the marquee again. There's no fuck-ups as of late or super recent. Um, so I thought I think it was interesting. I think it was just one of those moments that made him excited. And I don't think the... the um, what is this man's name? The Maheta? What is his name? Tiago Santos. Santos. Thank you. Uh, I don't think the Tiago Santos one really woke him up. I think, you know what I mean? I think he had a good fight. I think he enjoyed it. I know he said he's one of the more technical kickboxers and all this other stuff. But the reality was is I think he could have done more in that fight, and he just chose not to. I don't think he felt like he needed to in that fight. And I think it was the same with the Dominic Reyes fight. I don't think he thought it was as close as everybody else thought it was. Um... And I don't think he was motivated for any of them. I think he kind of, I think he kind of looked and said, "Who the fuck is Dominic Reyes?" Honestly, sure. Dominic, hey, Dom Reyes gave him a really tough fight, one of his toughest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. So it was a, uh, it was definitely a, a dominant performance from Jones. But I, I, I want to see what the Stipe game ends up being because it makes it for a very interesting fight. And on International Fight Week. Headlining International Fight Week. That seems about right. Yeah, I mean the skill sets there certainly match up in a way that is going to be far more intriguing. There won't be any any uh, one running over the other in a certain area in that fight. So I, I mean, and we've known this for a while. That's the fight. Even when John was rumored to come up to heavyweight, I mean, I guess the Francis one too. But like for a while, everyone was kind of like, why don't they just do Jones and Stipe? It makes so much sense. And like here, we're finally going to get it now. So we will see. And now the uh, the thing that concerns me about Jones in those fights in, in any of these fights at this point is that his ground game is disgusting. Like I don't even after a choke like that, a performance like that, I don't think people genuinely comprehend how good the kid's jits is. And if you've watched him in yeah. grappling competitions, because he's been in a few of them that have been televised, he's disgusting. The the strength that that man looks like he has is like Khabib esque. One of those types of guys where after you've rolled with him, you're like, dude, what the fuck just happened? Like, how is he that strong? And I think he does a lot of that stuff. I mean, he made it look effortless. He made beating yeah. Cyril Gan look like he probably had more trouble sparring guys than actually fighting Cyril Gan. Did it's you hear that? Uh, I mean, props to Chael Sonnen because he called this. But did you hear John say that he was hurt and that he only sparred three times his whole camp? No. Yeah, so Chael called, Chael called it. The first two or even three episodes of Embedded, John was in the pool. And oh, Chael right. was like, he's hurt. I'm telling you right now, if he's in the pool this much, it's because he's hurt. You don't see any clips of him going hard in the gym. Oh, wow. He's, he's hiding some type of injury. Right. And and John, I don't think John said – now I can't remember if he said what it was, but he said that he'd been dealing with an injury all camp and he only sparred three times. Um. And he also That's said crazy. that he felt very uncomfortable standing. That I heard. Be, because of it, I guess. And he, that he hadn't got to have as much experience as he wanted standing. But then he kind of said, he's like, I, I also feel like I might go kind of back to the wrestling going forward. Like, it, it is my greatest skill. And I kind of stopped yeah. going toward it for a bit. And I might just become that guy again. So, that'd Hopefully be he doesn't. Hopefully he doesn't forget his elbows, man. Like, yes, the wrestling is oh, I don't think he will. definitely his bread and butter, but the elbows, man, is really what put him over the top. I yeah. mean, his elbows, he broke Brandon Vera's face. He did. Yeah. It was nasty. And how about God, man? I mean, you can't have a more disappointing outing than that. He didn't even get to try. He didn't even get to do anything. If this guy go home after that fight. If he go home. <laughs> I, I just, I missed the last two letters there. <laughs> if he goes home after that fight and plays FIFA, somebody needs to break that fucking PlayStation in his house. He 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 needs he needs to go back and really watch that shit and really understand. He just got sunned. Like yes, he's the goat and all that shit, but like you can't can't just let people do that to you. But I think it's also just the difference between Jones's years and years of wrestling experience and comfort in that area and gone's relative inexperience wrestling. If it was, uh, if this was a, not pride, uh, uh, what's the kickbox? I'm blanking. One K one. 
Play thing in New York. I'm brain. Warriors Cup? No. I don't know what you're talking about. What are you asking? K1? If it was a kickboxing fight. If it was a kickboxing fight, okay. And it was gone. <laughs> Fucking this went off the rails. If it was just a kickboxing fight, you would you would expect Gone to be the much more comfortable one. But look, in MMA, everybody called it. Mark, you said it in our text thread offline that a lot of analysts try to get cute with their picks, trying to read into too much. And it's just like, dude, it's just stylistically. And this is not to take any credit away from John Jones. It was a it was a mismatch. Yeah, Gone did yeah. not have the skill set to go up against John Jones. Period. Full stop. Sorry. I also I also think to be honest it was a mindset thing too and John there was a point during the press conference before the fight where I guess John was asked to like kind of talk about what he sees in Cyril Gan and what he sees you know the the biggest challenges and all this stuff um and he broke him down pretty easily he's like yeah. he doesn't have any takedown defense he doesn't really have any any good defense in that area you know he's got good kickboxing but it's not a kickboxing fight Look, I'm not going to go in there and into, kickboxing. We all can run into a little bit of trouble with MMA math, but a little bit went a, a long way this time. When we, Pretty much everybody was like, well, if Francis Ngannou could take down Cyril Gan and hold him down, yeah. John Jones is going to eat his lunch. Yeah. And I, I, say, also, I, I also had this air that, you know, through the embeddeds and shit, that Cyril Gan was just, and, and John Jones said this too, that Cyril Gan and his team were just sort of like, happy to be there happy to be totally. part of the show right yeah. like we're you know we're in embedded watch me play fifa and like we're chilling out and you know and yeah. john is like i'm swimming i'm taking care of my body i'm watching tape i'm going in on you know on the research and all this stuff and there's a lot of fighters and, and i'm not saying that he needs to be watching tape i guess because there are a lot of fighters that take that approach differently depending on on, on their team and kind of how they decide to do things and that's fine but there seems to be something where Cyril Gan needs to disconnect from everything, and I think he does it to his detriment. Whereas essentially somebody like John Jones, who's 100% in the fight, 100% in everything, he's coming in there to play chess with you, and you're, you're, you're not even playing the same game with him. And it was, it was evident. He wasn't ready. It was too big of a moment. Yeah. It would have been interesting to see how, how Jones would have fared if it was just stand-up, because John has done that in the past by attacking his opponent's strengths in certain ways. So I could have seen this play out if Jones wanted to stand up with Cyril Gan and, and, and try to hang with kickboxing, but he didn't. He just he went path of least resistance and power to him. Yeah, I mean, he said it all all lead up that that's yeah, what he was going to do. Yeah. By the way, glory is what I was thinking about. Ah, uh, fair. Uh, I didn't know where you were going. All right, so we have an idea of what is next for John because it's going to be steep, eh? We already know that. Uh, let's quickly, for the sake of time, because we have a lot to cover and it's already getting late. Uh, Mark, let me start with you. Give me the name for Mr. Cyril Gaon. Where does he go from here in the heavyweight division? So I think there's a couple of choices, and I think it depends on what the plan is for this Curtis Blades and Sergey Pavlovich fight. I know they are fighting each other in April. If the plan is for the winner of that fight to wait for the winner of Bones and Stipe and then fight for the title, then I'm going to say I think Cyril Gaon should fight a returning Tom Aspinall. Ooh. If the winner of Blades Pavlovich is going to have to take another fight while they are waiting for Bones and Stipe to happen and then maybe the winner not to be ready for a bit, I kind of think that other fight should be Tom Aspinall because I don't know who else it would be. In which case, I would say throw Gone in there with a Sergei Spivak, which does feel like it's a little bit of a step down, but I think Spivak has, has earned a chance like that with the way he's been fighting lately. So depending how that, how that number one contender area shakes itself out, I think Aspinall or Spivak. Omar, what about you? Any other heavyweight names you throw out there for Cyril Gone? Yeah, um, I kind of knew the Blades Pavlovich fight was was going down. I I would prefer to see Tom Aspinall come back against Surogan. I think it's a good fight for because Surogan hasn't fought fucking anybody. Like, he kind of had like a quick rise a little bit. Um, they wanted to paint him as essentially. I think at one point they even said something like the next John Jones or something along those lines. Maybe very early on in his UFC run here. 
Um, I think we we knew that that wasn't really the case, especially after the Ngannou fight. But he definitely still shows some promise. Um, but I think Tom Aspinall is somebody who will play a game a little bit more with him. I feel like if he fights against Curtis Blades, we're going to see the same shit again. Um, I think Pavlovich is going to run over pretty much everybody at this point. But I think Tom Aspinall, especially with the injury he had, I think it's a great return. Um, and it can give both guys the opportunity to put on a good performance. Nice. 